Hey everybody, it's Brian Fleischman again here at Shorewood High School, AP Computer Science. Uh, today I want to talk about Chapter 3 Programming Project. We're going to be doing this My Little Pony Lab. That's part of the TEALS curriculum. If you're out there and you're doing uh, the TEALS curriculum in your computer science class and you're wondering kind of how to do this lab, uh, check out this video. Uh, we're finished with this lab and I just wanted to sort of uh, record this as a solution video uh, in case I can't get around to everybody in class and maybe this will help you if you're out there in the uh, in the world somewhere. Okay, so here's the idea. We're going to write um, a program that essentially kind of helps us figure out distances around this uh, fictional area um, called, uh, what is it, Equestria. Yeah, so I have a five-year-old daughter, so I kind of know a little bit about Equestria. Um, we got this map here just for kind of inspiration. It really isn't going to be required um, for anything other than maybe just finding locations of fictional places, uh, which I've already done. So uh, the map should come with the assignment if you don't do it. I probably won't mention the map too much or go back to it too much. I'll focus on the questions. All right, so let's go ahead and, and take a look at what we have to do. Exercise one. Okay, Princess Luna and Celestia are going to go on the tour of the kingdom to greet the other citizens of Equestria. Their tour takes them on a circular path. Okay, uh, write a method called road trip that, first of all, takes uh, as a parameter the diameter of a circular path and returns the length of the trip. Okay, so we're gonna use this uh, circumference formula right here. We're just gonna need uh, to borrow the, the pi that Java has in its library, the math.pi constant. Okay, so uh, this one should be straightforward. This, is, should be a, this should feel like a layup if you know how to do parameters and returns. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, I have a Pony Lab project started and I'm not even gonna deal with the main method just yet. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's public static and it's gonna return a distance, so the distance might be kind of like decimally, so I'm gonna return a double. And I think it was called what, road trip? Was it called road trip or round trip? I better check. Uh, yeah, it's road trip. Okay, so road trip, and it's supposed to take as a parameter the diameter of the circle. So I'm just gonna be, um, I'm gonna be safe and take the diameter as a double. If you didn't do that in my class, I'm probably gonna be just fine with that. Um, if you did it as an int, that's probably okay as well. But just in case, if someone passes in an int and you have a double listed as your formal parameter here, uh, that's gonna be okay. It can implicitly cast an int to a double. But if you have this as an int as the formal parameter and someone tries to pass in a double, the method won't even run. It will give you a little red squiggly saying that those are incompatible or cannot implicitly convert. So anyway, I'm gonna do double here just to be safe. All right, so what am I gonna do? Well, the circumference um, the circumference is going to be the result of the diameter passed in times that constant math.pi, right? And I, I can just return this, this uh, diameter. Oops, double, I forgot to name this, double uh, circumference. And uh, so I go ahead and calculate the circumference, and then I return it. Now, uh, return it, return circumference. Okay, so... Do I have to do this in two lines? Absolutely not. Okay, so if you did simply the word return and then just the calculations of diameter times math.pi, that's totally fine with me and it's clear enough for me. I just wanted to be super clear for anybody who wanted to kind of see, well, I can calculate the circumference by doing diameter times pi and then just return that answer, okay? So probably not necess necessary to do two lines, but I just wanted to be a little more clear. Okay, so before I move on, I'm going to, because in my class we have to Java docs every method, so I'm going to hit a little star, or sorry, slash star star, and Java Docs pops up. Uh, we have to fill this in. Uh, I'm just going to take the parameter of diameter. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory, diameter of circular path. So it's going to be a double representing diameter of circular path. And return a double representing the length of the circular trip. All right, that's fine with me. I, up here as well, you could kind of describe the method in your own words, but I'm just going to kind of leave it at that. So now if we call this, check it out. If I call a uh, round trip or road trip on some kind of diameter like a 9.7, um, I have a double there. So look, I have when, since I did the Java docs, it, uh, 
it tells me what the method does and returns and the parameters it takes. Okay, so notice up here, this won't print anything because it simply represents a double. It's nothing more than just like writing a number as a line of code. So we're not printing it yet, but I just wanted to show you the Java docs are kind of cool. Okay, there you go. There's Road Trip. Okay, that one hopefully you've had no problem with. Let's check out the other one. Write a method called distance that first of all accepts four integer coordinates. I'm going to go ahead and use those, right? Um, as parameters, and then computes the distance between the points on the map. Okay, so this is like an algebra problem, right? Finding the distance between two points. And just in case you can't remember the formula for distance, there it is. It's the square root of the difference of the x-coordinate squared plus the difference of the y-coordinate squared. This is just a fundamental algebra one type formula. It's a Pythagorean theorem thing. If you're wondering where this comes from, write out the Pythagorean theorem and solve for the c value. This is what you get, okay? Okay, so this is what we're going to get. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, so essentially, the the guts of our of our method are is going to be calculating this right here, right? And so we don't have a square root symbol in Java. We have to use math.sqrt, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this distance method. Um, it's going to be public static double. And I'm just going to call it distance. Did it say? I think it just said to call it distance, didn't it? Yeah, it's called distance. Okay, so don't overthink it. It tells you what to call it. And then it even tells you the names of the parameters, right? It accepts these four uh, coordinates as parameters. So I'm going to say, um, since I'm going to, I'm going to use only integer coordinates. So int x1, int y1, int x2, int y2. All right. Now, why is it public static double? Well, it's going to calculate a distance for us and return uh, a decimal representing that distance. So there it is. Let's see. Um, now we just need to perform this calculation. Now, so notice, like, let's see. Um, I can't do. Let's see, the distance is going to be is going to be the result of somehow. It's the square root. So here's how you have to do square root. Since we can't write a square root symbol in Java, we have to do math.sqrt. Okay, and then inside of here, we would do all of our work. Okay, so it's, this kind of acts like the square root symbol, right? Um, so we're going to take the difference of the x values. Ooh, okay. I need to do, um, check this out. So it's going to be x2 minus x1 squared. Now, by the way, I'm going to do something that's not allowed. That's not allowed in Java, but I'm just going to do it here just for a second. Plus y2 minus y1 squared. I don't think, so it, it doesn't have a problem with this, but I'm going to be just kind of careful here because I don't, you're not allowed to do this as, a, as an exponent in Java. It means something else. This little thing is not what you think it is. It's not. We can't just put an exponent on something like this. So I'm just going to do it the long way, okay, just to kind of save some time. To square something, you simply multiply it by itself, right? So it's x2 minus x1 times itself. That's like squaring it, right? And then I'm going to do y2 minus y1. y2 minus y1. Uh, and then it's taking the square root of the, that sum of squares. Okay, so this is essentially converting that distance formula that we had a second ago right here. Right? Instead of doing the squared, I wrote this twice and this twice, and then taking the square root of it, right? So that's how you do it in Java. You say math.sqrt to replace that symbol. Multiply these by themselves to get the effect of squaring them, okay? So I've calculated the distance, and now I'm just going to return it. Again, again, okay? Hold on a second. Do I have to do this in two lines of code, or could I have just done it in one? Could I have just said return that expression? Totally, totally fine. Okay, but I'm going to do it with two lines because, first of all, it doesn't make the method that much longer at all. And it's super clear that this is, this is a distance that I'm getting here. I don't know. I just wanted to be a little bit more clear. Okay, up to you if you wanted to do it in one or two lines. Okay, ready for javadocs? Slash star star enter. Okay, um, I'm just going to do this really fast. Um, okay, so x coordinate of city 1. I'm just going to paste this and just change a couple of things about each one, right? It's not going to be that bad. Okay, so this is the y coordinate of city one. This is the x coordinate of city two, and this is the y coordinate of city two. All right, and it returns the distance between the two cities. 
located at x1, y1, and x2, y2, respectively. There you go. That's a Java doc. There you go. So let me just make sure this works. I'm going to call distance real quick. Uh, distance. I'm just going to make up some fake uh, sort of, what if, let's say one city is at 1, 3, and then another city is at like 5, 10. Okay. And look at the Java doc. Look at that. Nice and easy, right? So really good. And, you know, I hope, I don't know if you guys are doing this in your class, if you're out watching this from a different school. Um, we Java doc every method because uh, all your programs later on, especially, need to be super clear about what things do. And then as you build your own library of, of methods, um, it's going to be nice to have the hover over sort of effect so you can read what your method does without having to go there. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at number three. This is this one freaked people out in my class for some reason. We're going to try to figure it out here. Um, oh, it says we should probably do this real quick. Test out your program by writing a main method that calls the distance method for each of the following pairs of cities. Let's see if we can um, calculate the distance between Baltimore and Manhattan. So here's Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore, I'm just going to write it down on a piece of paper next to me. Baltimore is at 2916, and Manhattan is at 348. So let's just see what the distance is. So let's print the result. So let's actually go up here. Distance, what was it? Distance between uh, Baltimore, which is 2916, and then Manhattan, which is at 348. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to print in this distance, sys out print in on this distance. So I'm going to grab that distance and print it. Save, run. Uh, nine, let's see here. Does nine make sense? I'm going to go actually to the map just to, just to kind of check it out. Where's my map? There's Manhattan over here, way over here. And where's Baltimore? There it is. So does that look like a distance of nine? I don't know. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if you go just vertical, right? One, it's a vertically a distance of eight away. And then you have to go over a little bit. So I guess a distance of nine point something, it passes my sniff test, right? It passes the common sense test. So I believe this is working correctly. So I'm just going to be like, okay, this works. This works. Yeah, I'm going to say it's 9.433. Units. Okay. Uh, I feel good about that method. I don't feel like I need to test it more because it looked commonsensical to me and I feel good about this math. Let's go ahead and go on to number three. Let's go ahead and look. Um, I need to go here. Yeah. All right. Don't worry about this one. Okay. So check this one out. It freaks people out a little bit. By the way, this has nothing to do with problem three. This is the, the circular path that we were talking about in problem one. Write a program that helps Princess Luna plan a three-stop tour of Equestria. Princess Luna has specifically requested that you choose your three destinations in Equestria as defined by their X and Y coordinates on the map. Okay, so basically what they're saying here is write a method that doesn't take any parameters. You get to choose. So there's no parameters. You hard code in the values of the three cities. Okay, so I've written down some, um, and we'll get to that in just a second. The, we're going to output the distance between each combination of the cities. Okay, so here's, here's what I'm going to do. Okay. Check this out. Let's write this method. Okay, so I'm going to write public static. Hold on a second. Let's see what it needs to return. All it does is output the distance between, so it doesn't return anything. It just outputs, right? It's just a print kind of method. So it's a void, right? We don't return anything. And then I'm going to call this, uh, what was it? It was called write a program that helps, okay. Write a program. Interesting. Okay, so I'd rather, I'm going to write it as a method, if that's okay. Because I don't want to write a whole program. Um, so I'm just going to write the method. Uh, I'm just going to call it distant, distance report or something. Trip report. How about that? Trip report. I don't know. It doesn't really tell you, right? And there's no parameters because we're going to hard code in the values. So as a comment here, I'm going to write the names of the cities. So I found that like... I think I found one called like Canterlot, and I think it was at 18 comma 9. And then I found another one called Manhattan. We already talked about this one a second ago. Manhattan is at 34.8. And then I found another one called like Dodge City, not Diff G. Dodge City, which is at 23.18.
Okay, so I'm just going to use these as my hard-coded values. Okay, so I'm going to take them as ints. Um, I'm going to call this, um, Canter Lot's going to be city1, so I'm going to call this city1x is 18. City1y is going to be 9. Do right, you see what I'm doing? I'm just copying down these values uh, because I'm going to need their x and y values to calculate the distance. Uh, then I'm going to have city2. City2x is going to be the Manhattan x, which is 34. City2y is going to be 8. Okay. Uh, City3x is going to be 23. And city 3 y will be 18. All right, so I have my coordinates of all my cities now, and now I just need to report the distances between the two. Okay, so by the way, I'm going to go ahead and, and actually kind of make this super clear. So I'm going to take Manhattan and I'm going to put it right here. And then I'm going to take Dodge City. I'm just going to make it really clear in my code what's going on here. I'm just going to grab that, put it here. All right, so it should be pretty clear now when you look at this uh, what each of these things represents okay so now I'm trying to be as clear as possible so that somebody comes into my code they know what they're looking at okay that's good code all right so uh, I'm gonna report the distance between Canterlot and Manhattan okay I'm just gonna sys out okay and I'm just gonna say it the distance between Canterlot and Manhattan is and then I need to run the, the distance calculation now I could spend all that time writing all this crazy distance formula again, right? But or I could just call this method, which is, is specialized for finding distances, right? It's all it does is take in coordinates and it spits back the distance to you. So why don't I employ that, right? So I'm going to use my distance method that I that I incorporated before, and I just want the distance between Canterlot and Manhattan. So it's going I'm just going to pass in my parameters: city one x, city one y. City 2x and city 2y. Okay, so real quick before we move on, some people may be looking at this and going, why did you have to do all this? Why didn't you just pass in 18, 9, 34, and 8 explicitly? Yes, that's probably totally fine to do, okay? Here's what I wanted to highlight though for this video. I wanted people to see uh, that maybe have, are having confusion about parameters is that you don't need to name these parameters in our new method the same thing as these ones up here. Do you see this? X1, Y1, X2, and Y2. I don't pass in X1, Y1, X2, and Y2. I pass in City 1X, City 1Y, City 2X, and City 2Y. Right? So um, I wanted you guys to see that when you pass in this, when it gets into the method, it's just known as X1 up here. Right? And then when I pass in city 1y in this location, once I call the distance method, it goes in here and then it acts as y1. Okay? So I wanted to, you guys to kind of see that it's unimportant what the parameters are called here, the actual parameters and the formal parameters. They, as long as they line up and type, then you're okay. Okay? So um, I could have easily just passed in 18, 9, 34, and 8, the numbers, and then I could have gotten the distances that way. I wanted you guys to see that you can pass in variables as parameters and the variable names do not have to match. We had a lot of confusion in my class about that. People thought that you had to match up these variable names and they were getting really creative about it. Um, you don't have to. All it has to do is be the same type. Is city1, um, let's see, the x1 coordinate has to be an int. Okay, is city1x an int? Yeah, it is. So it's 18, right? So when it goes in, x1 will be the value 18 in this expression up here, okay? I just wanted you guys to see it that way. All right, so the rest of the println statements are going to be remarkably similar. I'm just going to do this so I can, uh, oh, okay, that maybe is not going to happen for me. Yeah, I'm just going to do this so I don't have to run off the side of the screen. Um, I'm going to grab this here, um, and it's going to be so similar that I'm just going to do this. Okay, Canterlot and Dodge City instead. Dodge City. And then I don't need to change the city. I need to change the city two to city threes. And then I need to do Manhattan and what? I, the only other combination I haven't done is Manhattan and Dodge City. And then I change this to city two x, city two y, city three x, 
city 3 y that's it that's the whole thing right that's the whole i didn't want you guys to kind of get too freaked out about this thing some people kind of got really scared about this one and they were like kind of making crazy parameter lists up there no but you get to choose you get to hard code okay and by the way this whole section up here where i kind of listed out their coordinates as variables very unnecessary right i just did that to show you one last lesson about these parameter names right uh, they don't need to match up with the formal parameter names up here. As long as they're the same type, they can go into those locations and correspond with those values in that expression. Okay? Um, that's it. So let's test this thing. Okay, so I'm actually going to run the function. Do I need to print lin the function or can I just call the function? Let's think. Can I call the function trip report? Um, it does have print lins inside that function, so I don't need to actually run any print lins. I just call trip report. And as a result of calling trip report, it will print all the stuff that I just did. There we go. Not bad, right? That's exercise three. All right, how about exercise four? Okay, it's very similar, very, very similar to exercise three. They were kind of getting you ready for this, uh, this last one. This last method, I believe what we have to do is Write a one called total trip that accepts the parameters for three locations, in, uh, each containing coordinates, and returns the total distance traveled by visiting all three locations and returning to the starting location. Okay. Um, we're not going to do the extra credit today. It's going to take a long time. Okay. So if, if you guys thought about this extra credit part. Um, the, there's one crazy thing about four points is that you might accidentally go diagonally to the cities. Okay, so uh, we're not going to do that. Okay, so with a triangle, you have to go in a triangle. and There's no way you can go diagonally across a triangle. You know what I mean? But if you picture like a rectangle or a square, you could accidentally travel across a diagonal instead of going around the perimeter. That's what makes extra credit uh, so much harder than the triangle problem. Okay, let's deal with this total trip real quick. Uh, let's write the, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to Java doc this thing. I forgot to Java doc number three. Let's do this. Easy money. Star slash slash. Okay. No parameters, no nothing. Okay. Returns the distances between Canterlot, Manhattan, and Dodge City. Oh my gosh, I lied. It doesn't return. It doesn't return anything. It doesn't return. It prints or reports. Prints. How about that? There we go. So now I have a Java doc for that. Okay, fourth method. Okay, so I called it, what was it called? Um, total distance or something like that. I want to make sure I name it the right thing. Total trip. Public static. And I know it's going to return the distance. Okay, so public static. Static. Double. Total trip. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pass in, I'm going to take in six parameters. Okay, and it's going to be very, very similar to this right here. You see this? It's like this, but instead of just two cities, it's three. So I'm going to just save myself some time. X1, Y1, X2, Y2, and finally X3 and Y3. Okay, so it's like the coordinates for each of the cities. Okay, um, and I need to basically calculate the distance from around the whole trip and then returning to the starting location, which if you haven't figured out is actually just the distance between all of the combinations of cities like we've, like we've uh, drawn up here. So here's what I uh, expect you to do if you're kind of confused about what I just said. Go to your map, draw a triangle between three locations, and then calculate the total distance between those three locations. It's nothing more than the distance between each of the combinations of cities. Do you see that? I'm picking Canterlot and Los Pegasus and Ghastly Gorge. Right? So if you, if you look at this total trip, essentially what you're doing is you're highlighting the individual distances between each of the combinations of cities. So that's all we need to do is calculate the, dis the three distances, add them up, and then return that value. Okay? So let's just go, let's go ahead and calculate some. So the double between uh, distance of leg one or something like this. Okay? I don't know. The, the first leg of the trip okay, is a, is a result of calling the distance method on x1, y1, x2, and y2. That finds me the distance between the first two cities. 
right? Let's go ahead and do distance of leg two. Okay, it's not actual like biological legs, it's like the leg of a trip, in case you were wondering. So let's now go from city two to city three. Right? So some people are kind of freaking out about this. This happened in class for me. They go, wait a minute, whoa, 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 because you, you wrote this distance method, and it says, the distance method says it takes x1, y1, x2, and y2. Well, do you remember? It doesn't matter. The parameters don't, names don't have to line up. They just have to be the right type, right? So x2 and y2 in the method up here, once we pass them in, will just act as x1 and y1 in here x3 and y3, when they're passed in, will simply act as x2 and y2 when they get into here. You see what I'm saying? Okay, you don't actually have to line up the names of the variables. That was one big thing that went on in my class. How about this? Double distance, leg three. Now we need to go back to the start. It's going to be the distance between, uh, how about x or y, x3 and y3. So I'm going to go home now. x3 and y3, back to x1 and y1. I'm going back home. All right. And then essentially what I'm going to do is that there's a total distance. And it's just the result of distance leg one plus distance leg two plus distance leg three. And I just return that number. Okay. Uh, how many unnecessary lines? How, could, I, could I have done this whole method in one line? Yes, very easily, right? I would simply just say return, right? If I wanted to do it in one line, if you're kind of a one-liner kind of person, return this expression plus this expression plus this expression. That's it, okay? So why did I do it like this? I wanted to be really clear about what I was doing. I was finding the first leg of the trip, the second leg of the trip, and the third leg of the trip, summing them up, calling that total distance and returning total distance. So I wanted to be clear with my code instead of brief. Does that make sense? All right, so let's go ahead and write uh, some Java docs, and then we're done. Okay, uh, didn't we do something a lot like this? Look at this. I'm actually just going to borrow these uh, because they're almost done. All right, I'm going to borrow it from here to here, and look at this. <laughs> okay, I'm so lazy. Uh, and then I'm going to do this. Okay, this is the x-coordinate of city 3, y-coordinate of city 3. What's the return value? The return is the total distance traveling between, or tra traveling to each city and back to the beam. To, uh, from, how about this? Mm. How does it word it in the problem? How is it worded in the in the uh, in the instructions? Returns the total distance traveled by visiting all three locations and start returning to the starting location. Well, look at that. I'm just I'm that lazy. I'm going to go borrow the actual wording from the problem. There you go. Save that. I'm going to look at total trip. And I'm going to pass in these values. How about like 18, 9, 34, 8, and 23, 18, just for fun. Okay. Let's see if my Java doc worked. Yeah, it did. Okay. Uh, does it tell us to do anything else? Does it tell us to test it? Um, I guess I could if I wanted to. Right? Um, I don't know. It doesn't say to, so I'm actually going to cut the video off here. So the instructions don't tell us to like go print anything. Um, if you did this for your class, your teacher will hopefully just be able to look at your code and see if you did it correctly. Um, I feel pretty good about this solution. So I'll uh, cut it off here. I'll talk to you guys later.